<clears throat> Welcome to my 2019 Santa Cruz Bronson overview video. Roll the intro. So I want to start off this video by saying that this is my most favorite bike I've ever owned, hands down. It's a completely opinionated video. I'm not going to get too into the specs and details of the geometry and why I think the specs make it a better bike or why it's a better bike on paper. I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts of why I think it's a great bike. And maybe it'll help you decide if this is or isn't the bike for you. If you're not in the market for a bike, then stick around for some sweet B-roll footage and maybe a couple riding clips. Stick around. If you're new around here, welcome to the Loam Troopers YouTube channel. This is where I like to post all my mountain biking content and like to try to make cool videos for you guys to enjoy because I enjoy making them. And if you aren't subscribed, then go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. Like this video if you haven't yet. I would greatly appreciate it. So before we get into too much talking, let's go ahead and play a little B-roll and a little walk around of the bike. So go to that, go that way, go to that. Bronson is the C model frame with the S build. This is the second to entry level spec that Santa Cruz has to offer on the Bronson. And I'll tell you, for the price, this is nothing to run home about. But I really can't be mad at it. It's definitely served me justice. I honestly bought this bike with the intention of swapping out a lot of parts and really making the bike my own. I didn't expect much from this build offer, but I did want to save a little bit of money on it. And well, here we are a year later with a completely stock S build, except for a beautiful Deity carbon cockpit that I upgraded to a couple weeks ago that I do highly recommend. It is freaking sweet. But I must say that the S build has definitely exceeded my expectations. If you are going this route, I do recommend it. I think you can save a little money and then you can upgrade some parts later down the line. Um, has the one by 12 drivetrain, performs super well. Really can't complain about it. Like I noted earlier, I did upgrade to the carbon reserve rims. Love or hate carbon rims, these Santa Cruz rims are the cat's pajamas in my opinion. Rode them for the whole year, no issues, didn't have to true my wheels once. I got pretty rowdy on them. But uh, a couple weeks ago, I did crack one. Cracked it on a Monday, sent it in. Well, actually I didn't even send it in. Cracked it on a Monday, filed a claim on Tuesday, had a wheel by Friday, what more could you ask for? Had a wheel by Friday. And then I returned my broken wheel in the box that my replacement came in. No questions asked. Just filed a claim. New wheel. Amazing. Customer service at its finest. Bravo, Santa Cruz. Bravo. Let's talk about climbing a little bit. 
on the Bronson. I know this isn't a very interesting topic, but it's something we definitely need to touch base on. This bike is definitely capable of some good ascents. I haven't taken it on any epic rides. I must say, it's definitely not your dad's cross-country bike. This bike is a pretty efficient climber. I'm not an efficient climber, so it's kind of hard for me to say whether it's performed really well or performed really poorly because I really don't have the skill to go on those super long pedals but it gets the job done it gets me to where I want to go having the bike come equipped with the 1x12 drivetrain definitely helps out just throw it in that 50 tooth I believe it is 51 whatever it climbs like a goat I really can't complain I'm sure it'll get you guys to where you want to go pedal on brothers all right so let's talk a little bit about descending on the Bronson. Over the past year, I've gotten to ride a bunch of different terrains. Everything from big jumps to fast techie rock gardens, even more cross-country style trails. Uh, the bike really handles everything you put in front of it. Not once would I say that I felt outgunned by the climate that I was riding. I think this bike really holds its composure really well. Obviously, there's been a couple times where I needed to be a little more selective about my line choice as to where if I was on a larger travel bike, maybe I could have just plowed through it. It really has a way of making all the trails feel very alive and making you feel very engaged with your ride. Uh, a lot of other bikes kind of numb the trails and really take away from all the bumps and the chatter and really what you're riding and makes it feel like a little more of a lazy boy ride down the trail. It has a way of making all the trails feel very alive and engaging. Um, in my opinion, a lot of other bikes really numb the trails and really takes away from the ride at the end of the day. So I think that's something to also think about if you're somebody that you don't want a lot of feedback from the trail. You want something that's really smooth, uh, you know, more of a lazy boy ride down the trail, then maybe this isn't the bike for you. But the Bronson is really all about keeping the ride fun. For me, this has really been a one bike quiver and I couldn't ask for more out of it. I'm sure if I was at the bike park every other day riding downhill trails, then I would probably prefer a downhill bike, but with my half a dozen trips to the bike park every summer, this thing definitely gets the job done. Dude, can you shut up? Can we like see some riding or something like that? Come on, let's see some riding. anything I could change about the Bronson. Um, the first thing would be if I could put a coil on the bike. Do I think this bike would ride well with a coil? Yes. But from what I understand, the suspension platform really isn't designed to perform well with a coil. Um, I've been told that you'll find the bottom out really easy with a coil shock. But there are a few options that I want to share. There's a company called Cascade Components and they do make a long travel link for the Bronson. 
what this long travel length does is it gives seven extra millimeters to the rear travel of the bike. So that is making it a 157. By giving it 157 millimeters of travel, that opens up the tunnel for the rear shock. And by opening up the tunnel for the rear shock, you are able to fit a wider variety of shocks in there. From what I also understand is by adding this long travel link, you're adding 12% progressive, progressivity? You're adding 12% more progression to the shock ramp. So by adding that 12%, it's gonna create more ramp so that linear stroke from the coil is not gonna be so bottom out prone. And I also did some research to find that MRP is offering a pretty sweet coil that fits the eye to eye of the Bronson and they offer progressive coil springs. So I think that would be a pretty rad science project to put a long travel link on there and add one of these progressive coil shocks from MRP. I believe it's called I don't know what it's called, but I'll leave the link down in the description below. So if you guys want to check out that long travel link and the MRP coil shock, I think that's also an option. Maybe if you're on the fence about if 150 is enough travel for you, or maybe you really have to have a coil shock, then those are two options. Also, if anyone from MRP sees this and they want to send a coil shock my way, I will test the living guts out of it. So, a fun idea. What if you beefed up the front fork to 170 millimeters from 160, and then you add the long travel link in the rear, bringing it up to 157? Whoo, man, that would, be, that would be pretty fun. I think that would definitely add some extra rowdiness to the bronze and that would be a lot of fun to try out. Um, do I think it needs it? No. Would a coil shock be fun? Yes. Would I like to try a progressive coil spring? Super yes. Yeah, maybe in the future we can do a video on that. Try a progressive coil spring. That would be a lot of fun. If you guys made it to this far in the video, then Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, this is just kind of my opinion of the bike and what I've gathered over the past year. I love this bike. It's my most favorite bike I've ever owned and I really couldn't ask for any more of it. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't. Always making new mountain biking videos. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.